Hi everyone, I'm Mina Chow from Stanford. I talked about Alan Pantastin, which is joined word with greater valent, which is also from Stanford. So this word started from a toy problem written by Ian Tullis and Peter Minchev that appeared in a competitive programming contest called Udo Trojan 1020. So the problem is as follows. Suppose we have a tub of pens and they hold different amounts of ink, x1 to xn, and these amounts are not known to us. We want to print a pen that has the maximum amount of ink, and let's say the maximum amount is 10 units of ink. So what should we do? One natural thing to do is to test each pen by writing with it. So let's say we test each pen for one unit of time and see what happens. So one thing might happen is that one of the pens become empty, so we know we shouldn't pick it. But still, we have no idea about the remaining amount of ink in each of the other four pens that pass the test. We also know that this testing already reduced the amount of ink in the maximum pen, and it becomes nine units instead of 10 units. Even though the four pens have already passed the test, it's not ideal to pick one of the pens randomly, because it might be that only one of the pens holds nine units of ink but the other three pens just barely pass the test and don't have much ink in it. We know that this problem has two important ingredients. One is that we have to make a selection for many choices, and we are uncertain about the quality of each option. Also, while we can obtain some information about each option, such information is very sparse, and obtaining them has a very high cost in reducing the value of each option. While the pen testing example sounds like a toy problem, such a model has also other practical motivations, such as the hiring process, that we have a few candidates to choose from, and our interview or hiring process will impact the potential of each candidate. Also, we can see from an example that we also invest in one of the many startups. We don't know the value potential of growth in each company. So what we can do is to wait until a certain amount of the growth is obtained in each company. So let's say we wait until the net worth doubles. So while this waiting increases our confidence in that company, it also reduces our rate of return because the doubling in the net worth will not come towards our investment. So here's the formal setup for online testing, pen testing problem which is the online version of the problem I described that I study, uh, we will study in this project. Suppose we have n options and they have different values x1 through xn that are all non-negative and not known to us. At each step i, we will test the i's option and then make a decision. The testing proceeds by choosing some special theta i just for the i's option. There are two cases, if xi is smaller than or equal to theta i, we see that the test fails. In this case, we ob observe the value at psi, and the remaining value in the i's option becomes zero, which we denote by at psi prime. In the other case, that at psi is higher than theta i, we see that the test passes. In this case, we don't get to observe anything, but we know that the remaining value at psi prime is the difference between the initial value and theta i, the special we choose. After this testing, we will make a decision on whether option i should be accepted or rejected. Such a decision is revocable, meaning that once we accept the option, we don't have to explore the remaining ones. And once we reject an option, we can't go back and to choose the option, even the remaining options are less ideal. The objective is to maximize the remaining value in the option we choose. So we say that the algorithm is alpha competitive if the following holds. On the left-hand side, this expectation is always randomness in the algorithm. And this tau is the stopping time of the algorithm. That's the index of the option we accept. So at tau prime is the remaining value of the chosen option. On the right-hand side, this maximum XI can be viewed as the store that an omniscient profit can achieve. Because if the profit knows the values upfront, it can do no testing 
and just pick the option that has the highest value. So maximum FSI is the score that the profit will achieve. So we say that our, our algorithm is offer competitive if we achieve a one over offer fraction of the score of the profit. This online pen testing problem is closely related to this optimal stopping problem in the literature. So the setting is essentially the same, except that at step i, we do no testing. We just observe the value at i directly. And in the end, we don't maximize the remaining value because there's no testing going on. So we just maximize the value of our chosen option. Even for the simpler version of optimal stopping, we know that we have to make some assumption on the value of x to have some non-trivial guarantee. So here's a full fact. For any offer smaller than n, so n is the number of options, and for any algorithm, there's always a worst case instance, so that's the values x1 through x, xn, on which the algorithm is not offer competitive. So this says that the best we can hope for is n, and competitive algorithm, but that can be achieved by a trivial algorithm that selects from the n options uniformly at random without observing or depending on the values of the options. So it might appear disappointing that we can't do better than this random choice algorithm. So in the literature, there are two main problems that make some minimal assumption on the value x to have non-trivial guarantee. One is towards the profit inequality, the other is towards the separative problem. For profit inequality, it is assumed that the values at i's are independently drawn from distributions d1 through dn. And let's say we know the distributions up front. We know all the information about each di. In this case, we have to change the notion of alpha competitiveness. So on the left-hand side, the expectation is now over not only the algorithm, but also the randomness in the values x. And on the right-hand side, the benchmark is also expectation over the randomness in x. For the circuit problem, it is assumed that this xi is a random permutation of values a1 through an that are not known. So that's a setting where the values of the options are arbitrary, but we assume that the options arrive in a random, random order. So here, the notion of alpha competitiveness is that our uh, we take the expectation both of the algorithm and over the random permutation acts, and we compete with the maximum of AI. So motivated by these two problems in the literature, we define two different settings of online pen testing. So the first is towards the profit setting, where we make the assumption that the values are independent samples from and different distributions. And instead of saying that we know each DI directly, we have a more general setup where we are given some information of each DI. For example, we could be given the density function of DI, that's the full information setting, or we might just have a few samples drawn from each DI, so it's a harder setting. And here, for competitiveness, we have to look at the remaining value at tau prime instead of at tau because we're in the pen testing problem. Similarly, we define a separate setting where the values x1 through xn are a random permutation of fixed values a1 through an. And instead of saying that all these ais are unknown, we have a more general setup where we are given some information about the values and we'll get into details of this setup later. And similarly, we can change the notion of competitiveness by replacing the value as tau with the remaining value as tau prime. Okay, now, before I get to the results we obtained for this problem, let me describe a few related work in the literature that models this optimum stopping when there's a cost for observing each option. So starting from the work of drones in 1990, there's sequence work on profit inequalities where there's a fixed cost for observing each option. Also, there are secretary problems where there's a cost for interviewing each candidate 
or there's a discount in the value of the of the candidate. Also related is this Pandora sports problem of Weizmann. In this problem, we have a, we still have a lot of options, and each option is associated with a posted price. So we have to pay the price to know the value of the option and to choose it. And there are a lot of reasons for it on this Pandora sports problem as well. And finally, there's a problem studied by Albert, Hazar, Fiat, and Layton called winner pitching, and it. It is in fact a more general setup than our pen testing problem. And part of our results can also be obtained from their results. Now let's get to the results. We start with this warm-up problem when we are in the profit setting and the item values are ID samples. So that's a setting that we are given some distribution D over non-negative numbers and the option values S1 through Sn are just ID samples from D. In this simple case, can we hope for a constant competitive algorithm? Unfortunately, there's a simple negative result saying that constant competitiveness is not possible. In fact, the ratio has to be log n, where n is the number of options we have. So this proposition says this, there's a omega log n lower bound even for this ID profit setting. And in fact, this lower bound holds, even if we are given the distribution D, we are given full description of D. And also this D is not a pathological logical distribution. We'll see, in fact, choosing D as an exponential distribution would suffice for the lower bound. So here's a simple observation. Suppose we accept some option after we test it at threshold theta and the option passes the test. Then our expected remaining utility in the option is given by this conditional expectation of x minus theta conditioned on that x is greater than theta. So pictorially, this testing is essentially truncating the distribution of x at point theta and then shifted by theta. So we naturally asked, what if there are distributions D such that this testing does no help? So that's the idea behind the lower bound. Suppose we choose D as the exponential distribution. And because of the memoryless property of the exponential distribution, we know that no matter how we choose theta, this expectation is always one. So as a priori, the remaining value that we achieve is at best one. On the other hand, the benchmark that we compete with is this expected maximum of n copies of exponential random variable, and that scales as log n. So this is, establishes this log n gap between our score and the benchmark. So this might be disappointing, but we'll see later that this log n lower bound is the only obstacle towards being competitive. So to start with, we'll see a quite simple matching upper bound for this ID profit setting. For this upper bound, we need this also simple observation that suppose we choose tau alpha as the one minus alpha quantile of the prior distribution D. And let's say some, some option with value apps passes the test at special tau alpha. Then we have this lower bound on our expected remaining value that is half the difference between tau alpha over two and tau alpha. This observation can be proved simply by a picture. Suppose this is a density function of distribution D and we draw these two thresholds, tau alpha and tau alpha over two. Now we have these two regions. So given that X passes the test at tau alpha, we know X falls into either region one or region two. And by our definition of tau, both regions will have area alpha over two. So condition on that X passes the test, there's a half probability that X falls into region two, in, in which case the remaining value would be at least the difference between the two tau. So as a direct corollary, we have this lower bound on the expected remaining value. Now from this observation, 
that that a simple algorithm that is not n competitive. The only trick here is to pick some random alpha from this set one, one over two, one over four, and one over powers of two, all the way down to two over n. And our algorithm is really simple. We draw this random alpha, we test each option at the same threshold top alpha, and we will accept the first option that passes the test. Then what is our expected remaining value? Conditioned on the choice of alpha, the observation says that our remaining value is this amount. So over the randomness in alpha, we just take the sum and divide it by lot n. And by telescoping, this would evaluate to this difference between two tiles over all the lot n. And it's not hard to see that this difference, this, num this numerator is more or less the benchmark we compare with. That's the expected maximum Xi when all the Xi's are ID samples from D. So that's a brief sketch how we match this log N competitive ratio. Now we can state our general results for the profit and separate settings. For the profit settings, we can imagine a spectrum of different settings of different hardness, depending on how much information we have for the prior distribution. So the easiest setting would be when the values are ID and we know the distribution D exactly. And we have already seen that there's a matching lot N upper and lower bounds. A slightly harder setting is when the distributions are not the same, but they are still given to us. And perhaps the hardest setting is when the distributions are not the same, and also we have minimal observation of each di. So instead of learning the full density function of di, we are just given a single sample from each di. And it turns out that while these different setups look, seem to have different difficulty, it turns out that the optimal compared ratio is always log n up to a constant factor. For the circuit setting, we'll have two parameters that de defines the, the exact setup. One of them is the rival order of the options. The other is the amount of information about the values that we are given. For the rival order, we mentioned that the typical setup is when the permutation is uniformly random. But we also consider this harder setting that the ordering can be arbitrary. So that's when we are given some information about A1 through AN, and we are only guaranteed that the values X1 through Xn are these same, the same N values with some reordering. On the other spectrum is the amount of information about AI we are given. So in the easy setting, which we call the full information setting, we know all the numbers A1 through AN. Well, we also can see the harder settings where we are only given the maximum AI, that's called the optimum information setting, and the no information setting that we are given nothing about AI. So we can have this table of six different combinations of the setups. And it's not hard to see that the setting gets harder as we go from left to right or top to bottom in this table. In the hardest combination that the order is arbitrary and no information is given, that's essentially the worst case scenario, in which case n competitiveness is optimal. But we show that apart from this hardest combination, we can always be order n, order lot n competitive, and that is also optimal up to a constant factor. We remark that for the combination of arbitrary order and optimum info, this log n upper bound would follow from a upper bound of r bet azar field and later in star 96. So it might appear this log n compact ratio is quite robust. It doesn't depend on which profit or set setting we are in. But quite strikingly, for the easy sub combination of the settings in the random order and full information case, we have a slightly improved compact ratio of log n over log log n. So to recap, we define this online pen testing problem that models the decision-making problem 
on the uncertainty. And that's a setting where the information about the options are really scarce, and to obtain this information is costly. We show that even in this easy setup, we can't avoid this log n lower bound on the compatible ratio. But for many settings that appear harder, we can achieve this log n up to a constant factor. Here are some concrete open problems and future directions. So first, we didn't focus on the constant factors in this book. And to sharpen the constants would be a natural open problem. Even for the RID profit setting, there's a gap of E on the leading constant in front of log n. We can also extend this setting of choosing one option to multiple selection, maybe on the computatorial constraint. Also, we can think of other models of testing and costs. So instead of getting a binary feedback from the testing, we can imagine a smoother function as the feedback. And also for cost functions, instead of paying a cost of theta i, we can consider a model where the cost is a general function of the special theta i we pick for each option. Thank you for listening.